a fifth Pizza Tower video. Well, I'm not only doing it because this game has basically been keeping me alive for the past few months. I'm also doing it because I just love it so much. And because I left my country and I wanted to do something special before I left. Still, if you guys could also check my other content, that will mean so much to me. I have much more than just Pizza Tower. You guys won't regret it, I promise. Still, when it comes to video games, there's a few things I rarely tend to do, like play a sports game or praise a modern Ubisoft game. Still nothing. But it is also very rare for me to mod a video game. Only exceptions that come to mind are Left 4 Dead 2 and GTA San Andreas. I mean, in the latter I could throw Kamehamehas, can you blame me for that? But overall, I don't feel the need to alter a game. If I already played it and had fun with it, that's all I need, really. But sometimes, in the modding communities, you find some pretty insane stuff that you just can't help but give it a go. And hey, if I can squeeze some extra from a game I really liked, then sure, let's see what crazy stuff I can find. So in case the title of the video wasn't obvious enough, I'm going to explore some of the coolest, craziest and funniest Pizza Tower mods I could find. Simple enough, right? Then let's begin! I think it's only natural that I start with the most popular Pizza Tower mod, Lap 3. What's this, you may ask? Well, I think the name is self-explanatory. After you finish your second lap on a level, you can do it all over again a third time. But now, regardless of how much time you had left, Pizza Face will start to chase you no matter what. And just like in the main game, one touch is all he needs to kill you. So you have to repeat the escape sequence, not only incredibly fast, but also avoiding Pizza Face at all costs. And I like this mod a lot. It's so simple, but it's easy to see why it's so popular. Having Pizza Face relentlessly stalk you gives you some insane levels of anxiety and adrenaline, but it's so much fun. But at the same time, I kinda hate this mod. Let me explain. Lab 3 is insanely difficult, no doubt about it. But it's not the difficulty that I hate. It's the fact that in order to enjoy that difficulty, you have to do the entire level, then an escape sequence, and then another escape sequence just for one more chance, and... Lab 3 isn't just getting to the end of the level as fast as you can. There's a lot of trial and error involved. You have to manipulate Pizza Face enough so he can give you pixel-perfect escape routes. It's so easy to screw up Lab 3. So it makes me wish you could just restart this section if you already did the level and the escape sequences. Again, I like this mod a lot, but it is excessively time consuming, all for just one chance that is very easy to screw up. But damn it, if it doesn't give you a lot of adrenaline. Before I continue with more general mods, let's look at those that change your playable characters. I love to do that in GTA San Andreas, and in Pizza Tower, I was able to find some good stuff too. First, have you ever looked at Pepino and thought, Ooh, I wish he was an anime girl? Well, thanks to the modding community, your dream can... kinda become a reality. Here we have Pepina, a mod that, as I just said, turns Pepino into an anime girl. I like the design, I think it's funny, but there is a problem. This mod is incomplete, and the creator has said he has no plans to finish it. So unless someone else decides to take the mantle, you'll be having a mod where Pepino jumps between genders every two seconds. But at least it's not as bad as the Spongebob Lab 3 mod that I found. Have you ever wanted to do Lab 3 but thought Spongebob would have been a better choice of character instead of Pepino? Well, here you go! And by replacing Pepino, I mean only three frames were swapped with stock images. Okay, this one is not good. But don't worry, because the next ones are excellent! For some reason, a lot of people keep replacing Pepino with Super Mario, the Mario World sprite specifically. But the ones that stood out for me the most are the mods made by users Only Spoonful and Freddy Freddy YT. It's the same concept. Almost every single of Pepino's animations, save for the transformations, have been replaced with sprites from Super Mario World. But both creators went above and beyond and even made their own custom sprites to fit with certain actions Mario can do in his own game. And while these mods may be similar at base, they still have their own unique differences. The Spoonful mod has some insanely funny taunts. Mario gets a unique Jotaro portrait in the versus screen. And the battle against the Vigilante turns him into Fire Mario, it's great! The Freddy mod is a bit more complete, you could say. The entire opening scene has been altered to be more Mario. And that's when it hits you. No wonder Pepino is in depth, he got hit by a Nintendo lawsuit! This mod also went the extra mile and altered a few boss fights. Pepperman becomes Wario, which is appropriate since I already talk about how these two characters' boss battles share a few similarities. 
to have Luigi as the noise, and an 8-bit Mario as fake Pepino. The Vigilante only gives Mario a gun, not as creative as a Fire Flower, but I'll take it. Both mods are excellent, you can't go wrong with any of them. But what I love so much about them is that they specifically had to choose Super Mario World Mario to replace Pepino. These mods, combined with the crazy energy of Pizza Tower, really encapsulate that chaotic energy that all the internet parodies gave to Super Mario World Mario. Mario! <laughs> now, if you're still sad about not having a complete Pepino mod, this one might do it for you. And I think you know where this is going. The Topping Gals mod. This one replaces all the toppings with anime girls, each with their own unique design, and I'll give them credit. They are all so well animated, all of them have super detailed frames, and each also has different tones, and that's not all. If you go to Don't Make a Sound, all the animatronics get replaced with more anime girl designs, and it doesn't stop there. The title card changes, and if you look closely to the backgrounds, you can also see that they were all altered with the new Topping Gal monsters. The attention to detail in this mod is insane! But wait, we're not done! When I saw the Topping monsters were now anime girls, I was like, oh, I bet the jump scares will now be something sexual. But no! They actually made an attempt to make them somewhat unsettling to look at! I even tried to get the Oktoberfest easter egg to see if they also changed it. And guess what? You know, after seeing how much effort was put into this mod and how unique the designs of the Topping Gals are, it makes me wonder, who was crazy or horny enough to come up with something like this? If you know, you know. I'll only say two extra comments. One, the Pineapple Gal has the funniest walking animation. And two, the Mushroom Gal is the prettiest one. There, I said it. I'm 100% right on this. And you know, why stop with the toppings? Why not download a mode that turns pizza face into a girl too and... <sighs> Domino's Pizza? Listen, I have a very, very specific order to make. Personally, I will also suggest the mod that replaces Pizza Head with Mario's head. I thought it was only gonna be a lazy, simple image pasted on, but no, it's actually very well implemented and animated too. Like, look at how fucked up he looks during the second phase of the battle, it's pretty cool. I only think it's a missed opportunity, Mario never does that sound off. Still, no matter how many anime girls or Marios we bring to the table, none of them remotely compared to the most insane Pizza Tower character mod I could find, the Eevee mod. Now, listen here. When a friend suggested this mod to me and I looked at this image, I thought it was gonna be some poorly drawn Eevee with nothing special about it. But he insisted, try this mod, trust me, just try this mod. So I did, and... Fuck! No wonder he wanted me to talk about it! This mod is the definition of a passion project! As you will expect, this mod replaces Pepino with an Eevee from Pokemon. But the amount of detail, the amount of care in this mod is beyond insane! First. I think it's so cool how the creator managed to adapt TV into the Pizza Tower art style. Second, everything. Every single thing you can imagine from Pepino has turned into Eevee. The animations, the sound effects, hell, even the opening cinematic has been completely altered to be all about TV. But it doesn't stop there. There's just so much care put into every single detail, and there's a plethora of references any Pokemon fan can appreciate. All the level title cards have been replaced, and sometimes you can have the evolutions match the respective theme. For example, Refrigerator, Refrigerator, Freezerator has Glacian as a cube. Pig City has Umbreon. Lotsa's Dungeon has a Flareon. The TV display on the top right also shows animations of Phoebe to reflect his current predicament. All the transformations are adapted to the Pokémon. My personal favorite is Ghost TV because not only does he look like a cast form, but because his TV image is beyond fucked up, but it caught me so off guard I couldn't help but laugh. There's also the taunts. Every single one of them referenced all the evolutions, and if that wasn't already cool enough, during the final beatdown you give to Pizza Head, this thing happens. But without a doubt, the thing that surprised me the most was when I entered the fake Pepino boss battle and I was greeted with this. It's so genius! And again, the battle was bursting with references! But wait, we're not done! 
Gustavo has been replaced with Pikachu. And same thing, animations, references, everything is beyond detail. And that's only the surface of it all. This moth alone is worth an entire playthrough of Pizza Tower, just so you can see all the fun references and ideas it brings to the table. I have nothing but respect for the person who made this moth, because it explodes with so much care and attention. Now let's go for some more general mods. Remember what I said about Lab 3 being insanely punishing and time-consuming? Well, if you think Lab 3 is a bit too overwhelming, maybe the rush might be more of your alley. This mod combines every single escape sequence in the game under a strict time limit. Is it simple? Sure. Is it exciting? Yeah! Is it more manageable than Lab 3? Absolutely! And it still remains quite challenging. If you love non-stop action, this one will definitely do it for you. So okay, do you want more absurd challenges? What about fighting every single boss of Pizza Tower at the same time? Yeah, this challenge is beyond bullshit and even broken to some degree. It is impossible to not get hit here. You have to minimize all possible damage, take advantage of every small window you have to attack and in case they happen, learn how to use potential glitches in your favor. But at least it made for an incredibly fun and tense streaming session, so it was all worth it in the end. Now, have you ever wanted to have better feedback whenever you get hit by an enemy or parry a projectile? Congratulations, there is a mod just for that! With this one, every time you get hit, you get a... But whenever you parry something, you'll be greeted with... Pizza Tower Together, a mod that lets you play online with your friends. And by playing, I mean just see what each other is doing. I kinda wish you could compete or even hit each other in this mod, but no, it's just chilling with your friends in maps. But at least this mod still has other cool stuff on it, such as adding an extra floor that grants you access to some unused Pizza Tower levels. But the highlight of it all is that you can choose between different playable characters all with their own movesets and skills. The only problem of this is that some characters simply can't do certain levels. For example, the Vigilante lacks a super jump, therefore it's impossible for him to finish Peppy Bot Factory. But hey, at least you have a huge variety of alternate color palettes to choose from. The one that really caught my attention was the Supreme skin, because I thought, oh wow, it's like that one Goku meme, I wonder what would happen if I... You never disappoint. Now let's see some levels made by the community, and for that we have Create Your Own Pizza, a mod that lets players build their own levels. And thanks to the suggestions of some friends and my own curiosity, I was able to find a few interesting ones, so let's see them in order, shall we? Go fast, eat ass. What will be my first time? This is a level that never stops! It puts you on max speed at all times and you just keep going and going and going and going and going! There's a lot of trial and error here. But once you have it all noted down, the speed you can achieve is beyond exhilarating. You can acquire such levels of speed that even the game struggles to load the level itself. It's so much fun, highly recommend this one. Squidward's Challenge Not gonna lie, I was kinda expecting something like this already. What I didn't expect, however, was a trap remix of the Krusty Krab theme. Meat. This one is fine, it's fun, but nothing special. I'm only mentioning it because I like the unique atmosphere of this level. It is a bit unsettling, just not as much as don't make a sound. But still a good time nonetheless. Hollow Knight Pad of Pain. If you have played Hollow Knight, then you know exactly what this is all about. Luckily, unlike the knight, Pepino is more or less immortal, so it is not as frustrating as the actual Pad of Pain. I think it's amazing how they managed to adapt that level into a pizza tower format by getting creative with the obstacles and challenges you come across. I have to admit though, this level puts into perspective how slippery pizza tower's platforming is in comparison to Hollow Knight's. It is very easy to screw up by accident, so get ready to get hit. At least some 40 times. But is it fun? Sure it is! And I even like how they made a unique title card for this level. It's very charming. Floor R. As you can imagine, this mod adds a whole new floor filled with unique and original levels. Sure, they might not be of the same caliber as the main game, but they're still a great time. Huge shoutouts to Pepino's Pizza, a level that is very creative and unhinged at the same time. It was surprisingly memorable. Run. 
Imagine if war, don't make a sound, and the crumbling tower of pizza had a child. This level is the result of it. An escape sequence where every single pizza tower obstacle is thrown at you without mercy. You have a timer, the animatronics chasing you, cows that kick you everywhere, big cheeses that pop out of nowhere, never-ending explosions, stupid rats that obstruct your way, and eventually, pizza face will show up during the final stretch. Run for Your Life was a genuinely exciting and tense level. Yeah, the trial and error was a bit bullshit at times, but I still had a fantastic time with this one. I think it's as good as Go Fast, it has. And finally, we have the Sage 2019 demo. If you know anything about the beta of Pizza Tower, this level will no doubt bring you a smile. It is simple, but it is interesting to see how much this game evolved through its development. You can even play the Sneak EXE Challenge with multiple difficulty settings. Just make sure you don't fuck up the same way I did while streaming. Sneak EXE kills you instantly now, so be wary of that. Anyways, good luck. Well, I'm feeling saucy today, so... Now, this was some of the best stuff I could find about Pizza Tower, but that doesn't mean the video has to end here. Now I present to you Sugar Spire, a Pizza Tower fan game that takes place in an alternate universe where the noise is the main character while Pepino is the crazy rival. As the name suggests, this game is all about candy. Every level is completely original, has its own music and even unique gimmicks and power-ups. The enemies work almost the same, but they have also been given a new coat of paint to match the game's theme. Cheese slimes are now gum slimes, stupid rats have been replaced with chocolate frogs, a huge downgrade if you ask me, Pillar John now takes the shape of a bear called Gummy Harry, and Pizza Face is now Combo, an enemy that reminds me so much to the Secret Boy boss battle from Kirby Star Allies. But I don't know, maybe I'm just stretching it too far. Since this game is in as developed as Pizza Tower, the controls and especially the movement can feel a bit wonky at times. But I still can't help but admire how detailed this game is. From the level design, the backgrounds and all the animations, it feels like a genuine official product, all without losing that essence that makes Pizza Tower so special. At the time of this video, this fan game only has 4 levels, but if it continues to improve even further, I'd love to see this one coexist right next to Pizza Tower. That is, if MacPick is okay with that, since, you know, he's not involved in this fan game as far as I'm aware. So okay, we have covered Pizza Tower, a fan game, so there's only one thing left. Games with Pizza Tower mods, and you'll be surprised at some I could find! First, we have Doom 2. Thanks to the mod Bring Your Own Class, you're able to bring Pepino into the game, sporting a variety of weapons and melee attacks from Pizza Tower, like using his revolver and shotgun, attacking enemies with electrical outlets, as well as other melee attacks. Pepino can ram into his opponents at high speeds, and even references other characters with his moveset, going as far as using the noise as a melee weapon. And speaking of that, there's also a mod that lets you play as the noise, and same way as Pepino, all of his attacks are jam-packed with references, even paying back to Pepino by also using him as a melee weapon. What makes this mod so special is that it was created by the official Pizza Tower Discord for Game Nights. In fact, McPeak himself drew the sprites, and with the help of other talented members of the community, this mod became a reality. And that's not the only mod McPeak has worked on. He was also responsible for making a mod that makes Pepino playable in Rivals of Ether. He was in charge of the art and animations. Mr. Sussman, one of the composers of Pizza Tower, took care of the sound design and the music. And the programming was done by a guy who goes by the name of Mr. Nart. I love this mod, simply because every single action Pepino does is so recognizable and pays a lot of respects to the source material. And again, just like the Doom mod, the fact that the creator of Pizza Tower worked on it makes this mod way more special. Mega Man 8-Bit Deathmatch is a fighting game that combines elements of first-person shooters and Mega Man, offering a plethora of levels as well as online multiplayer. As you could expect, there is a mod that makes Pepino playable, being able to dash through the map, body slam his opponents, grab them and even taunt. But there is a very interesting story behind this game. One day, McPig was feeling tired of drawing Pepino, so he made a mod for Mega Man 8-Bit Deathmatch that will involve a cheese slime with a cowboy hat. He ended up liking this design so much that said Cheese Slime eventually evolved into his own character, the one we know as the Vigilante. 
Sonic Roboblast 2 is one of Sonic's most popular fan games, a 3D platformer that brings the unique aesthetics from the Sega Genesis games, featuring a lot of levels, enemies, and most importantly, speed. It is a surprisingly polished fan game, and the community support doesn't fall behind. For Pizza Tower, I was able to find only one mod, the Pepperman Battle. It works exactly the same as in the original game, but the 3D perspective, as well as how slippery Sonic Roboblast can be, makes this an incredibly punishing fight. Like, it is already difficult to calculate where Pepperman is gonna land with his bounce attack, but actually hitting him feels like a miracle. Nonetheless, I admire the effort. However, the truly impressive mod lies in Sonic Roboblast 2 Kart. I won't explain this game, you know how kart racers work, but the mods here are so incredible! Like, there was this one that adds Kiryu Kazuma from Yakuza, Aegis from Persona 3, Hatsune Michael from Hatsune Miku, and the Pizza Tower mods did not fall behind. Not only do you have a plethora of playable characters, Pepino, Gustavo, Sneak, The Noise, The Toppings, as well as many others, all with their own stats and the option to customize their color palettes. I can't stress enough just how high quality the character sprites are, and how fantastic they look in action. And the courses are just as good, I love every single one of them! Pizza Panic Sun is your standard tower level, it's filled with so many references, and thanks to all the grease from the cheese slimes, the floor is slippery, making it easier to screw up. Pizza Escape is also pretty simple, but it's a lot of fun nonetheless. Tubular Trash Zone, which is inspired by Oh Shit, which will have you going at high speeds through the sewers. Thousand March Zone is where they get a bit more creative. Since the level is inspired by war, this course has a set time limit and you must complete as many laps as you can before the bomb blows up, all while avoiding mines, explosions and pizza soldiers shooting at you. It's really exciting! Funky Factory Zone, which is based on Peppybot Factory, is full with conveyor belts that can give you speed boosts or slow you down. Then, you have Deep Dish 9 being turned into a pinball stage. What makes this one so interesting is that there are two versions. One that has walls that change places with each lap. And the second one that... Hey, hold on! That's Waluigi's Pinball from Mario Kart! I mean, did they expect me to not recognize my favorite Mario Kart track? I mean, I'm not complaining, it just caught me off guard. There's even a full boss battle against Pizza Face and that honestly surprised me. Last time I saw a racing game with boss battles was Mario Kart DS. And Diddy Kong Racing, technically speaking. Still, just like the Pepperman boss in Sonic Robo Blast, this one is way more complicated than not exactly in a good way since it feels forever to land one hit on the boss. Still, I appreciate the effort. But without a doubt, the best track of this mod is the Crumbling Tower of Pizza. A very long stage inspired by the level of the same name. It combines sections of all previous tracks as well as other ones such as Known Forest and Fast Food Saloon. It is fantastic because just like the actual level, it feels so fun, so triumphant, and it is exhilarating to blast past your previous experiences until you reach the final goal. All while you have a time limit to finish the escape. This entire mod is a love letter to Pizza Tower fans. It is beyond excellent. Now, before any of you ask me in the comments why I didn't mention Pepino being playable in Anton Ball Deluxe, well, that is because in that game, Pepino is a guest character, so I don't think that can be considered a mod. Regardless, I still think it's cool that Pepino is slowly showing up in more indie games, and it's even cooler that he keeps being married to Anton. Good for him! So, what did you think? Is there a mod do you think I missed? Which one is your favorite? Please, let me know in the comments and while you do that, thank you so much for your time, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to support the channel, you know, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, Patreon, or as I said earlier, check my other content, that will mean so much to me, yeah, it will help me so, so much. Have a wonderful day, and take care! I'll see you next time!